You guys seem to like the last keyboard review, so let's do another. Thank you for the support on that, by the way. Today, we're taking a look at the RK100 by Royal Clutch. I'm not exactly sure if that's how you pronounce it, but you know what? For the remainder of this review, let's just say RK, all right? I've actually taken the liberty of modding this keyboard. That's right, this is the first keyboard I was actually able to mod. And yeah, I have a fair bit to say. Let's get into it. In terms of looks, there's not much going on here and that's not a bad thing. The RK100 has a simple, white, clean, minimal look. and But yet there is also a, a different color scheme for this that comes in black with different color keycaps, which is also uh, pretty interesting. And on top of that, just to uh, add in, uh, this is not the RGB version that we have today. We have the one that is a straight ice blue backlit uh, keyboard. There is an RGB version. And the only difference between that keyboard and the one we have today is the fact that that one comes with the uh, option of the Gatoron white switch, which supposedly is a newer switch that kind of replaces the red Gatoron switch. It's a little bit faster. So I don't know. You guys be the judge of that. You can get down in the comments and let me know uh, what is your preference in switch. Today, we actually have the Gatoron reds on this particular keyboard. Now, what I will say as far as the switches are concerned, the typing experience, I kind of prefer the Gatoron Browns over the Reds. However, uh, after I actually lubed it, my thoughts quickly changed. Look around the keyboard on the front, we have all the LEDs. That, that is the LEDs for the num lock, the charging LED, the caps lock LED, and also the LEDs to let you know which OS modes you're in because this keyboard does have different modes uh, based on whether you want Windows or Mac. I obviously stayed in Windows mode no matter whether I was using the Mac or not, and it worked just fine. Also, a pretty interesting thing is I know someone might ask me in the comments uh, whether this keyboard is compatible with consoles or not. RK actually went out of their way to add into their product page that this keyboard is compatible with all the consoles currently out right now. Now, is that actually true? Or you know, does it have any issues with that? I simply don't know. I don't own any consoles. So again, if you guys actually get this keyboard and are using it on your console, get down in the comment box, let everyone know what issues you're having or if it works just fine. Look around on the back of the keyboard, you'll notice that there is a USB pass-through with a two port USB hub. And I think this is pretty nice, except for the fact that I don't really like how it was implemented because the, the way it's set up, once you plug in a USB-C in case you wanted to use this keyboard wired mode, uh, you'll be kind of limited on the size of the uh, USB drives or what you can plug into the other two USB ports because the ports on either side of the main USB-C port that you need to plug in. I don't know why they chose to go that route. And from what I can tell, it, it's okay. I just wish they would have implemented it a little bit differently. In case you're wondering, since we're talking about wired mode, you can use this keyboard and a wired mode via USB-C cable that it does come with. Uh, Bluetooth mode and also 2.4 gigahertz wireless mode as well. Um, and it has a USB adapter that you can neatly tuck away underneath the keyboard in case you want to plug, in, plug into it that way. Now, unlike the Logitech G613, I'm not exactly sure if there's any advantages to using you no know, one connection over the other. I've actually been primarily hooked in via Bluetooth and I've been gaming, working, and everything via that mode and have experienced no lag whatsoever. So I guess it's really based on your setup. This keyboard pretty much has all the connections you need to hook it up, no matter how your setup is and you know, wherever you're using it. However, once you get past that, you'll want to go ahead and set up your keyboard. That means plugging in a USB-C. And again, like I said, you know, yes, there is that USB pass-through there, but the first thing you'll notice is that 
nice ice blue backlit that I was talking about earlier. It does look very nice. It shines through the keycaps very well, especially in a dark room. So if you're someone who likes uh, see-through keycaps, maybe you like those pudding keycaps that, that has been kind of trending as of late, they will go very well with this keyboard, except for the fact that again, we don't have the RGB version, but the RGB version is available. The next thing I noticed when using this keyboard is how the keyboard actually maintains its battery life. We're looking at a 3,750 milliamp hour battery according to RK, and it holds up very well. And it's unlike Keychron, which seems to turn off the whole board or put it all to sleep, um, this simply turns off the backlight. You turn that off and the battery pretty much lasts all day. I've had no battery issues with this keyboard whatsoever. It lasts me literally 16 plus hours every day, working, gaming, all that stuff. Now, by this time you've been using the keyboard quite a bit, you're kind of used to a lot of things. You're kind of used to how it types and the feel of the keys, and you're kind of used to how it sounds. By the way, here's a snippet of that. And you're also probably used to the lighting and controls. And let's go ahead and take a look at how the lighting looks as well and a few of the different modes that you can put it in. What you're probably not used to is the hidden functions of this keyboard, which you have to access via the FN key or the function key, which is you can also set macros up for doing different actions on the keyboard. And you can also set up lighting macros as well. And with that being said, I wouldn't blame you if, yeah, you are never going to use that crap anyways, because I'm sure not. And since it is hot swappable, I went ahead and took the time to actually lube the keys for the first time. And I went through the whole shebang of looting the, lubing the switches and lubing the stabs, actually using um, dielectric grease on the, on the stabilizer so I can actually get the space bar and all that to, to sound very good. And well, just listen to that. All I have to say about that is pure ASMR. I absolutely love it. After putting in the awful, awful lot of work to actually uh, lube this keyboard, major shout out to the key YouTubers out there who do this all the time. This took several hours and two days to get this keyboard done. So major shout out to them. But after going through all that, I absolutely love it. It was full on worth it. I'm actually actually going to do this again. Um, and I'm actually putting together a project to actually do it to the Keychron uh, keyboard that I have, that K4V2, which is actually soldered in switches. I got a soldering iron, so keep on the lookout for uh, that project coming up pretty soon. Now in conclusion, for $90, I, I have to say that this keyboard gives you a lot. You get all the connection types you could want for any kind of setup you're trying to do, whether it is console, computer, laptop, whatever it is, this keyboard is set up to connect to it. And then on top of that, you get a nice ice blue backlit 
with very um they're, they're not the best of keycaps but they're just decent keycaps that have a nice shine through i think they're pretty nice um but you also have the ability to change that these are this is how swappable you can change out the switches you can change out the keycaps and you can do so easily without soldering all of that for 90 dollars, and it is in this lovely 96 percent format and for that one person on my last video which complained about um like the print key and the insert key being missing here well today's your lucky day sir this keyboard has those keys on there um so that will be kind of the the con when it comes to this keyboard is that the, as far as the 96 percent standard 96 percent layout is concerned there is no actual standards so some keys may be there on other boards that are not on others and that you might find a little bit annoying but for me this is a great, great keyboard. And honestly, this is my favorite keyboard right now. The Keychron is awesome, but this keyboard with lube Gatoron red switches, absolutely love it. So if you're in the market looking for a hot swallowable 96% keyboard, maybe you wanna consider this. Hopefully I gave you the information you need to be able to make that purchase decision. And if I have and you enjoyed this video, then hop on down in the comment section and let me know. And while you're down there, hit the like button and subscribe for more tech videos all the time. I'll see you guys in another video very soon. You have a good one. Bye.